Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Professor Tom Barry. I am the instructor for SOS 201, Introduction to Sociology, uh, where we explore the micro level all the way to the macro level. So individuals, understanding human behavior, um, understanding some of the influences on human behavior at a micro level, um, and then move all the way up into macro level, social institutions, structure, process, and these kind of things. So it's kind of a smorgasbord of topics that we kind of engage in. I really look forward to uh, engaging in conversations about this content throughout the course of the term. I think you'll find it insightful, valuable, interesting, um, and engaging. Um, so the purpose of this video is to provide you an overview of the class, I'll walk you through some of the general um, expectations about the class, requirements, assignments, just to kind of get you familiar with uh, with the requirements, and then also to uh, provide some information about the first about the weekly assignments, the first of which is due the night before our first class session. Um, and so every week the assignments are due the night before our class meeting. Uh, for those that are in the, the Zoom class, remote class, we meet on Tuesdays at 1030 in the morning. That may be a little bit fast for you to get this first assignment done by that time. Um, if you can't get it done before our class meeting on Tuesday, uh, for those in that class, then you know you have until till the end of the week until Sunday night to turn that first one in. But then in future weeks, it's always due the night before our class meeting. All right. So with that being said, let me um kind of just kind of walk through the class. Okay. So here's if you go into your your Canvas, you should have all of your classes listed here listed there. Here's those two hundred one. Depending on the section, well, I guess you'll have one of them in there. You won't have both of them. Um, a little bit of information, it's basically about the class. I got this calendar view. Whoa, there's something missing in week five. Got to get that taken care of. Um, but let's go to week zero. Uh, here's some background information um, about me, uh, just sort of how I got into sociology, my background before, uh, before I started teaching sociology. I have a background in speech communication, a background in social work, and then eventually landed in, in sociology. So it's been a sort of wild ride, but a very valuable, interesting, and beneficial ride it has been. Um, and then uh, the video will be here. This is a little bit of information about the class. Um, video for those in the Zoom-based class, here's a document um, about kind of Zoom-based requirements. Um, to kind of go there real quick. There's a, there's a document. Um, basically explaining, you know, when in a Zoom based class, it's critical everybody has their cameras on. The expectation is that cameras on throughout the course, of the, throughout the course, uh, be prepared, be ready, be engaged, um, and uh, avoid doing things like cooking while going, being in class, being in bed and being in class, you know, be, be present, be, be aware, be engaged. Um, and, you know, that's just a part of what's required in a Zoom based class. Um, so, Video camera on. If you don't have the capability to have a video camera, you have to let me know. Uh, or if you run into an issue uh, in terms of technological issue at a particular time, let me know. Um, but the expectation is that <clears throat> camera's on throughout the duration of the class. And then here's the Zoom ID for those in the Zoom-based class. There's the Zoom ID. And um, you know, if we use that, that Zoom ID throughout the course of the term, uh, I will usually be in class 15 minutes before the start of the class. If you want to jump in and chat, or if you have any questions you want to talk about. Um, some overview information about the class. There's a little, little bit of overview. Why don't we see, there's this sort of about this course. Looks like maybe I'll, yeah, just a little bit of information um, about the class. Basically start, first part of the term, we get into social theories to explore what is sociology. And then after kind of diving into kind of culture and language and human sort of a uh, human behavior, we start getting into more of the macro level, start looking at stratification, gender, sexuality, race, deviance, and a lot of other social issues. So that's kind of, um, there's a flicker just kind of pounding on the, beating on the house. Um, the, class are, the class is structured in a way to facilitate your engagement in both the textbook um, as well as the lecture contents, so kind of walk you through the assignments. Um, there's no, um, yeah, okay. And then my 
my hope is that through this video overview, you get sort of a good understanding of requirements. I'm here to support you throughout your journey in the class. So if you have questions, definitely let me know. Uh, one question that arises like, okay, textbook, do, do I need one? Do I not need one? Um, here's the textbook for the class called Real World, The Real World, World 7th Edition. It's a really engaging um, book. I think it's, it's written really well in terms of accessibility uh, to be able to understand. Um, as I, when I, I'll bring this book back up when I talk about the assignment format um, and sort of how to sort of engage with the textbook. For the purpose of this class, this is the seventh edition. Uh, they're going to the eighth edition starting next year. You can, you know, you get the ebook through the bookstore. You can get, look and go online, uh, find a used copy, Abe Books, A B E B O O K S. It's a great used book website. Um, you can order one there, used book, but sometimes it takes, you know, a week or two for it to arrive. So had a couple students last term, didn't have a book at week three. It's like, okay, that's going to start to become a problem for you. Um, Cause I do make the chapter available for the first, for the first week, uh, but I can't for fair use policy. I can't, you know, put the book out there for, for longer than that. Um, go to the chapters more than, more than, more than those first few chapters. So you can go back to previous editions, sixth editions, fifth editions, probably fine as well. I wouldn't go back earlier than the fifth edition. So if you can get, you want to get a used book, you know, that's process to get it. Um, you can make that happen. Um, okay. So that's that. Here's the syllabus. I got it pulled up down here too. So let me just pull up the syllabus. There we go. Okay, class meeting times. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Here's my offices at Modoc 211. Here's my office hours. I am available to you at other times as well. So if you, if you ever want to meet outside those times, just let me know. We'll make it happen. Um, kind of walk through a little bit about the requirements for the class or, you know, what the, the goals and objectives for the class. Part of, I mean, a key part of sociology, anthropology, history, all these different areas are to basically develop more uh, refined or add to our analytical skills to be able to analyze the social world in a more complex way uh, in order to understand human behavior, including ourselves. So part of the journey, I think, in sociology is a journey of self-discovery and discovery and examination of the social world. Um, part of number two here is to apply knowledge, experience, take course information, to foster one's own personal growth and development and appreciation and understanding of the broader social world. I mean, we live in very complicated, complex societies and systems. It's really beneficial to have a more complex understanding of human behavior and social systems so we can develop greater appreciation for self and for other. Um, and then finally, for as far as the social science and cultural literacy outcomes to identify and analyze complex practices, values and beliefs and it's cultural and historical meanings of difference. So kind of look at contemporary issues, historical issues, cultural values, beliefs, and influence, and how those vary across different social groups is kind of what that means. And then more specifically about sociology, our, you know, our general outcomes for the class are to examine the macro level, societal structures and institutions, and their relationship to uh, systems of power, systems of privilege, systems of inequality. Um, that's a big part of sociology. Second is to critically analyze our theories. We have three main theories. There's a lot more nuance than that, but in an intro class, we kind of get into the three main branches of theories. Um, examine different perspectives, uh, uh, different vantage points, different, different views, different beliefs, different, different ways of looking at the social world and challenging our own assumptions. Um, analyzing the influence of values, traditions, and beliefs on human behavior in larger society, and then do a lot of this work in terms of investigating sociology through formal and informal writing. Uh, if you look at the layout for the class, um, the requirements, we have weekly assignments, and I'll go over one in a minute. And there's attendance and participation, 15 points for each class period. Um, be there for, be ready, present, and engaged for uh, for those points. And then uh, midterm assessment, 
And that'll be based on concepts, theories. There'll be a, an objective part to the midterm, concepts, theories, things that we're talking about in class. Um, so objective, matching, true, false, that, that kind of thing. And then there'll be a more subjective component to the midterm um, assessment. So an essay um, where you explore, or recount some of the main, main ideas from the class. And then you can kind of walk through, um, you know, here's all this information about each one of those. I should mention for the chapter lecture summary assignment, um, I guess it's not here, but it's in the assignment sheet. So it's, it's um, due the night before our class meeting. If it's turned in after that time period, it's 15% grade deduction, and it must be turned in within a week uh, of the original due date. Here's some information for you if you have need for me if you need more um, information or assistance with technology great resource there if you have documented disability uh, key resource on campus so information there um, the institution uh, you know no discrimination based on age disability sex marital status national origin ethnicity color race religion sexual orientation gender identity gen genetic information citizenship status veteran status and other protected classes so just be aware of your rights as a student. Um, you know, that's an important thing, right? So if there's ever a violation, you have a place you can go and contact. Um, Title IX statement, protecting for, from uh, discrimination based on sex um, on in, uh, within institutions of education, uh, private and public, I guess, uh, not only education, but uh, just gender equity and non-discrimination policies. So contact information there. There is counseling, av counseling available for students. It's a great resource. Important students are aware of that. Man, it's like having a life coach. Man, sometimes the road gets kind of bumpy. Here's a life coach for you for a period of time. Um, so good resource there. Principles of community um, that to embody these ideas, uh, promoting empathy and understanding, respecting the dignity of others, uh, engaging in academic integrity in terms of one's own work, promoting a a healthy, safe learning environment for all. Um, and that's, you know, it takes all of us to, to make that happen. College is a unique uh, experience and college classroom, a unique experience. We, it's probably one of the last opportunities you're gonna get an opportunity to have so many different people with different vantage points and different perspectives, different walks of life, being in a shared sort of work environment. It's a pretty cool, pretty interesting uh, experience. And to make that learning environment safe and healthy and productive, requires respecting, uh, respecting others, respecting oneself, um, and ensuring, you know, adhering to these sort of principles of community. Uh, we have safe zone training on campus. It's specifically uh, geared up for training information, um, awareness gathering, or increasing awareness um, about specific issues and concerns, um, and understanding the lives of individuals who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, um, and gender and sexual identity. So safe zone training, it's available to use the students. So information there, if you're interested, uh, you do not have insurance for this class, just FYI. Uh, basic needs resources, if you ever, you know, financial, housing, car, just basic resources, you're kind of struggling, great resource on campus. Um, encourage you to, to contact, um, you know, contact them if need be. Academic honesty, do your own work. Put things in your, your own voice. This is kind of the, the probably um, where this comes up the most would be the weekly assignments. The weekly assignments you have, there's two parts and I'll walk through one in a minute, but a part one is a review of textbook content. And when you're in that area, it can be, you can be going through the book, you're looking at a concept theory, trying to explain it. And then you uh, are basically, you when you want you need to, to summarize it in your own words always use your own voice but the trick becomes for some is they look at something they're reviewing it and then they replicate what they see so they just reproduce it without giving quotation marks without giving a source citation and then i mean it's plagiarism at that point and i mean i can't grade that i can't assign a value on that um just makes you know that particular assignment and a zero for that particular component so always just put things in your own words whether that's from coming from the textbook or an outside source. Um, I mean, I'm interested in your understanding of the material. So you, to do that, you have to get into using your own voice. Um, always, I mean, if you want, consult as many sort of resources as you want. I mean, be thorough in your review of the textbook, but always when you're summarizing information, put it in your um, own words. Had a couple of students last term that kind of struggled with that. I mean, I worked with them, but um, 
you know, it's just such an important point to be able to demonstrate your understanding. And then here's the schedule for the class. Um, you know, you can, you can walk through it. I'm not gonna walk through all the stuff because this is basically what you see here, whoops, in the weekly schedule is also what we see in Canvas week zero. And these will be released each week. I would release them uh, the night. So with the, our class meeting and then that night at, at midnight is when the new week opens up. So these will be a bit available to you. And that's this is basically the syllabus, but broken down in a different format. Okay, so let's see what, uh, okay, so now we gotta look at this chapter and lecture uh, summary assignment sheet. Um, let's kind of go there, see if I can do that. Cool, all right, here's basically the assignment sheet. So I start off in this assignment sheet. Let's see if I can get, get this moved over just a little bit. There we go. So kind of start off with like, okay, what is the benefit of writing? I think writing is a form of, is of expression. It's a way to demonstrate understanding. I think through writing, we develop a greater uh, understanding. Uh, most of the class is based on a written work. Uh, and I think that's really valuable. It's a, it takes more time. It's a different amount of time, right? We don't have these like longer detailed, uh, you know, three exams, so objective, multiple choice kind of thing. It's more focused on these sort of weekly write-ups. We do have a midterm assessment. We do have a final exam, but I'll break those down in ways that are pretty tangible, pretty straightforward. Um, and they shouldn't be complicated because we'll be working through the content and it should be pretty straightforward at that point. But, the, but writing is a way of engaging and understanding. Um, so I mean, there's no other way I think to explore one's thoughts and ideas in a class besides just communicating. If you were to, the cool thing, if we could just have a conversation for over a period of 10 weeks and everybody brought notes into class and we just chatted, that would be stellar for me. I don't, you know, papers aren't magical, but in this kind of format, it's just really important to be able to get thoughts on paper, process information that way. So the ben there's a lot of benefit to writing. So each week there's basically an assignment, um, the lecture, a particular lecture video that has concepts, theories, ideas, applications. Most of the videos are between 45 minutes and 60 minutes long. I put them in different, there's different themes and themes that I, that I organize them by theme. Um, and that may be helpful to you as well, because you could watch theme one, theme two, take a break, come back, watch the other themes, whatever. You have, you have the benefit of doing these video lectures is that you can you do it, you know, spend the time when you can walking through the video. I encourage you to do it earlier than later, just so you don't run into, you're not like trying to race at the end and trying to get it done. Um, each week there's an assignment that coincides with the video. So I'll walk through the first one here in a second. Um, it contains questions. So in the weekly assignment document, you'll see like theme one questions, theme two questions. And again, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, but there is an assignment document that goes along with each weekly video. Um, midterm and final has an in-class component and then a outside assignment. Okay, so the requirements for the weekly assignment. So in section one, think about section one is the textbook, all right? So the goal here is to identify points, themes, ideas, concepts, something that strikes your interest from the chapter um, and talk about it or write about it. So another, unless I, I note it otherwise, cover two points, themes, concepts from the chapter we cover that week. So in the first week, we'll get there in a second, I'll show you the document, we're covering chapter one and chapter two. And at this point, right now, I can't remember what I said about covering content there, but um, it's two, two concepts from, from each chapter we're covering, unless I note otherwise. So the, the item that you select, it's, I mean, it's, Free game. I mean, it's whatever you choose, whatever interests you, whatever you want to kind of write about. Um, there's nothing, I'm, I'm not looking for any particular concept for you to talk about. What I am interested in is how you write about it, the depth you write about it, and that kind of thing. So the item that you select could be pretty narrow. So in the chapter, like on page 19 of the chapter, talking about Durkheim, there's this concept called anomie. Anomie is a sense of disconnection brought about by the changing conditions of modern life. So that's the, the definition. You could take that term and then explain, describe, where do you see it? Um, why is it important? What's the value in it? I mean, explore that concept and that idea like, okay, man, when I read about the enemy, it made a lot of sense to me. 
a lot of disruption in the social world. Here's where I see, you know, disruption or disconnection in the social world today brought about by massive change. Here's the changes. So you're kind of running with it, right? So that's a very narrow concept. Or you can take something more general like structural functionalism and describe that in more detail. One caveat here is to not replicate the content in the lecture here in, in your section one. So I say that like a little hesitation, and the hesitation is that in the lecture video, I may talk about Anna me real briefly, but you in the, in the write-up, you, you just like run with it, rock on, good, that works. If you're gonna talk about structural functionalism in your write-up section one, but it's basically recounting the same thing I said in the lecture video, it's really not adding a lot of value. Um, you're not in, it's not like, okay, taking it and running with it for a period of time. So just think about, think about that as a framework. Uh, regardless of the size, selected item, define it, explain it, explain its value, its importance, these kind of things. Um, make connections to your own life, to historical contemporary events, word count for each one of those 100 to 200 words word count, which is about, you can even go like this, you highlight a section, you, then you can see the word count should be right there at the bottom left. There you go, 123 words. There's 123 words right there. So that kind of gives you the indication, you know, just 100, 200 words for each one of those. Um, and then the section two is very specific questions. So I'll kind of jump into the week one document here in a second, and you'll see those questions. So question, section one, textbook, section two, um, the le lecture video. Okay, so one last word about the textbook or that section one. Um, you can read, if you want, the beginning of the chapter all the way to the end of the chapter. And that's one way of approaching um, working through the class. You know, I mean, that's not, I mean, one thing about, you know, college is learning how to re read judiciously. Uh, sometimes in some class, it's really important. You got to go through. I mean, it's like, okay, I got to work through the textbook from beginning to end. It's an important part. For this class, I'd say, Open it up, start looking around, you know, the chapter, huh? what, what grabs your interest, focus on that area, read that section, um, and then write about those things in that particular section. If there's something in class that's kind of confusing to you, um, like after we talked about it in the lecture video, uh, you can read about it further in the textbook. So it's a good reference uh, book as well. But don't feel like you have to read front to back in terms of the book in order to uh, be successful in the class or um, to, to complete the assignments. So you can be selective, um, use it as a resource. Uh, let's see, okay, there's a spot to turn it in um, and I'll share that with you in a second. And then basically put stuff in your own words, as I mentioned before, it's due date, it's, you know, it's due the night before our class meeting. And if it's turned in after that, it's 15% grade deduction and must be turned in by the end of the week um, of the class. All right, so now that pause here for a second. All right, so now I'm back. Um, back in the canvas here. Here's some, uh, you know, here's additional resources. That I, I mentioned the syllabus, but more links there for support. So financial, um, housing, car, food. Uh, just be aware there's resources available to you as a student and in the community um, at large. Okay, so week number one. So here's every week I provide an overview. I encourage you to, to read the overview. It's just a real quick overview of, of the class for that particular week. Uh, for week number one, I do put PDFs of chapter one and chapter two um, here. So if you don't have the textbook yet, um, you have access for the first week. Uh, by week two, you, you know, have, they need to have access to the textbook by week two. I will put a copy down in the library uh, so that you have a copy down there so you can, you can reference that. Um, Chapter lecture summary requirements. So here's the document. So every week there's one of these. Dang, okay, chapter section, chapter and lecture summary requirements week two, chapter lecture summary requirements week one. So let's look at that. Whoops, let's look at that. Okay, so here's for week one, we're covering chapter one and chapter two. So for this first week, I mentioned before, covering two chapters, two concepts, ideas, things from each chapter. Since we're covering the first week of the term, they want to overload you too much. Uh, take one thing from chapter one, one thing from chapter two, uh, 100, 200 words each for each one of those. Describe it, explain it, 
uh, engage with it. Why is it important? Where do you see it? How is it relevant? You know, those kind of things. Just kind of like, you know, have some fun with it in that regard. I mean, make applications to your own life, make applications to the social world, bring in sort of examples, illustrations, uh, make that part your own. But one concept from chapter one, one from chapter two. Okay, so that's section one. And then section two, in the video, uh, and there's a link there in Canvas, I'll go back to that in a second, but they're all YouTube videos where I walk through, basically there's different themes. Um, and I organize them that way. So as you, this is all chronological. So you should be, be going through the video and you can kind of go through these themes as well. So provide your responses. I try to be specific as, if, for as far as if there's a word count, I'll put it there. If not, you know, just answer the question until it's answered um, kind of thing. So provide, so first question, so theme number one, as you're, as you're reading or watching the video, one thing comes up is about, okay, what are the social sciences, sociology? So provide an overview of some of the key ideas addressed in this theme. You don't need to cover it all, impossible to do so. The goal here is a general overview of what was covered in theme one. So just like this big sort of general sweep of what was theme one about. And then I kind of get like a little bit more narrow here. There's a PowerPoint slide that contains information or part of the lecture talk about expected years of schooling by year and by country. Uh, so put your sociology cap on. What are some things about years of school across time and country that your mind takes you to? So when you see that data and that information, what, what do you start to think about? Um, I mean, why did things change across time? Why the differences? So you don't answer, need to answer those questions, but just try, once you to think about or identify here is where, where does your mind take you and you look at that data and that information? Um, you should have two sociological observations. So two observations, and maybe don't worry about the sociological component too much, but two things that, um, two observations about what could explain some of the patterns of educational level of expectation across time and across place. Um, your observation can be a sentence, it could be a little bit more elaborate. Basically, it's your call on that one. And then finally for theme one, what does examining processes and impacts related to industrialization and urbanization tell you about the relationship between society and people. And that will make sense as you watch the video. There's not a right answer here. It's just like, okay, I just want you to explore, okay, net, why is it important to understand industrialization and urbanization? So, okay, I'm not gonna go through all, all these, but that, that here's the rest of the, you know, the question. So in your document, your Word document or other document that you create and make a P PDF of to submit, Section one, just title it section one, concept one, concept two, uh, section two, video lecture, just go ahead, theme one A, theme one B, theme one C, you know, just kind of organize it that way, just so it's easier for me to keep track of. Um, again, just sort of same information as before, um, in terms of policy, late policy, plagiarism, and then I did put a final note down there, pace yourself, you know, you got the, 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 the uh, textbook part and then the video lecture part. So just try to pace yourself, not doing it at the last moment. Maybe do, you know, the textbook part one time and then the video lecture at another time. Um, I, th well, I think that's it. Um, I think I did mention for those that are in the Zoom class. Here's the Zoom link, right? And then I'll say for some reason you're trying to log into Zoom and it ain't a working, like something is just not happening for you. Send me an email um, at that moment, St stick around, hold on. Uh, I will open up my email. I will, then I, you know, you and I chat on the phone, try to get you connected up to the technology for that day, uh, figure, figure something out. I mean, I mean, I've taught in Zoom-based classes before. I'm, Every once in a while, there's somebody has a technical problem, but they usually figure it out and they can jump into class. But if for some reason, you know, like especially the first, it's usually the first class period, like, ah, I can't, you know, the password, there's, you know, there is no password. There's just the, the ID, which is listed right here. Um, there is no password, but if somebody has, I don't know, there's having a problem with their system or something. Anyway, just, just contact me, we'll figure it out. All right, looking forward to uh, working with you throughout the course of term. Yahoo, it's going to be fun. Uh, let's, let's, uh, we'll be putting our sociology caps on and illuminating, looking at, examining um, the social world, which includes our own place within that. 
And it will make sense. Well, we talk about C. Wright Mills and the sociological imagination of week one and week two. I really kind of hold true to this idea that um, C. Wright Mills had about the sociological imagination that our own biography intersects with history and culture and society itself. So the more we understand social forces and understand the social world, the more we have a better understanding of ourselves, of others. Um, it's a really powerful thing and a very empowering thing. So, all right, with that, um, have a great rest of your weeks. Look forward to, to meeting you in class. Take care. Be well.